Hi everyone, welcome to The Colour Cave. My name is Gem and I like to play with art stuff. Clouds are indeed not just white. One of my viewers, Shilpa, has requested that I do a tutorial on how to colour clouds. I have taken that idea which I am going to honour, so Shilpa, I hope you're watching, and I'm also going to look at how to draw clouds as well for the artist who wants to put them into their pictures, but also for colourists as well who may want to add a background. And there's a few methods and techniques that I will use depending on what kind of mood I'm in and also depending on what I want the picture to look like and the mood of the picture. So I'm just going to grab all my pens and pencils and we can get going. All right, guys, I had a quick pit stop there for a cup of tea. So that is me. I am all set. Mmm, tea. The first thing I'd like to show you are a few different ways to draw clouds, depending on your preference and the, the general sort of tone of whatever it is you're doing. The first thing that springs to mind normally when we think of a cloud is this sort of puffy cotton ball kind of idea. And to be honest... Um, it's the easiest way to do it. Let's be realistic. There's no difficulty in it. There is very little thought involved as well. And one of the nice things about drawing clouds is that if you do a quick search on Google Images, you will see a myriad of different shapes, styles and types of cloud. It's really easy to get some inspiration. Also as well, if you're lucky or unlucky enough, to live in a country like Scotland where it's cloudy most of the time. All you have to do is look up in there and you've got some inspiration right there. So yeah, this is the, probably the most common type of cloud. I'm leaning quite heavily when I'm drawing this just so that it shows up well in the camera. It's also the reason that I'm using one of these Palomino Blackwing pencils. Um, it is quite a, quite a dark, heavy pencil. If I was actually drawing for myself, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't press as hard because when it comes to actually putting some colour into your clouds, it's more about what you do round about rather than what you put in the clouds that make them look like clouds. That probably doesn't sound very sensible there, but I'll, I'll explain a bit better as I go along. That's the first type of cloud, really easy to do. All you're doing is these little C shapes and just sort of overlapping them as well will give you much more interest in a, in a bunch of clouds if you like. The other option, again, which is probably um, a little bit more realistic and, again, depends on the, the type of thing that you're doing in your picture, is a, a slightly less defined sort of puffy cloud. I know clouds all have technical scientific names. I do not know them. Um, but you see a much sort of softer, wispier cloud. And I found myself drawing these uh, uh, more often than this type of cloud. And it's just a much more relaxed form. And uh, I tend to draw them sort of longer and narrower like this. And again, I just do the same thing. I overlap them a little bit. And that gives you a slightly different effect when it comes to putting in some sort of background. Moving on to slightly more stylized clouds, and there's two that I see really, really often, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you an example in a coloring book, um, just because it's much easier. I will draw them on here. I've got to move my tea out of the way in case I knock it over. Sorry, guys. Uh, the first is Hannah Carlson, and also uh, there's another lady, and I can't remember her name. That is absolutely terrible. It'll come back to me this sort of thing, this sort of really like detailed line art type cloud. Th this is really popular and I've seen this a lot in quite, in quite a few of the colouring books. And again, it is a very stylized choice, but depending on what you're drawing or what you're colouring, this can look absolutely fabulous. So I'm just going to draw some of these down, I'll probably move down a bit, down about here. And she's usually got a starting point and then all she does is bring out all these lines. So start with a little circle and then you start to bring your lines out like so until you're kind of touching where you've started. And then all you have to do is decide where you're taking these lines. I mean, I'm just doing this very quickly and very roughly to show you. 
So you start to get this line pattern forming. This is also quite handy in doing uh, waves as well if you want to use it for water. Start another one down here. So again, just a little circle and then I just start bringing the lines off like this. And you can make these sections as big or as small as you want. You know, the, the thickness of them is entirely up to yourself. Depending on what how detailed you want it or, you know, how, how fiddly you want it to look. Because some of them, if you do them quite small and you keep the line thickness quite narrow, you can get some really intricate looking finishes with this. Um, and they can look absolutely spectacular. I seem to have a really unsteady hand today. I don't know what that's all about. I haven't been drinking, I, pro I promise. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. It's a bit early for that. Right, so anyway, you get the idea with this. It doesn't take much practice for you to perfect this to a level where you can use it. And really, I mean, you you can be quite free with this. That's one of the the nice things about it. Um, you know, you can kind of go go on a on a bit of a whim, and uh, just sort of see where the lines take you within a sort of you know within a defined area, i.e. the sky of your picture. So anyway, you get the general idea there. It does take a wee bit of time, but as I say, it can produce some absolutely wonderful effects. Another style of cloud that I see quite a lot, and it's it's one of my favourites when it comes to what I would say is a more um, cartoony type cloud. And again, I'm just going to show you a picture because it's much easier for me, me to do that than try and explain it in my usual sort of bumbling, long-winded way. Um, this is Kirby Roseanne's, uh, Kirby Roseanne is Mythomorphia. And you can see, contrary to what I've just said, he's, his clouds are down at the bottom. So they are still in this sort of swirly idea, but they are a lot less detailed. And these are great fun to draw because you can get some pretty funky looking shapes and things out of it. So I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration with that. Now, if you start off with the little curl first, like this. And then after that, all you need to do is bring it round and you can make this, this is now going to be the outside edge and you can make that a little bit wavy, you know, there a lot of them aren't round. And you can do that and then start another one there. And just this sort of idea, again, quite, quite free and loose shapes. You know, there's no, there's no rules to this or, you know. You can you can pretty much do what you like with them. Change the direction of them if that's what you want. Oh. So you get the idea with that as well. Another really straightforward way of adding in some cloud features. And again, you can overlap them. You can do what you like with them. It's not, you know, it's all down to, to sort of stylistic choice, as it were. One of the more recent pictures that I was colouring had very um, cartoony type clouds and they were quite bold. And, you know, they kind of looked like this um the, the you know the lines were very pronounced and they were quite harsh there was a lot of like there was a lot of protruding areas in it and the clouds were quite sort of defined as well and i did something different with them uh which i'm going to show you but i'll get on to that just in a uh, in a little while all right then so when it comes to coloring in clouds this is where it gets interesting because you can add color to them and make them still look like clouds First of all, you're only adding in a hint of colour. Ideally, you want to decide what colour your sky is going to be round about your clouds. Because one of the things with clouds is they do reflect light. So it's more about deciding this background colour and then you can incorporate that as a reflection off of your clouds. So if we were to go for a, a bog standard, let's just say, for example, we decided we were going to have a blue background. So I've got a, a blue coloured pencil here. What are we? Uh, blue Lake PC1102, if anybody is interested. 
So I've decided I'm having a blue sky and this just happens to be the shade of blue that I've picked. Now, if I am drawing, then what I will do is I will actually draw the clouds in the colour of the sky rather than in, than in graphite pencil. So in fact, I'm just going to do this over here so that you can see what I mean a bit better. So if you've decided on your sky colour, then take the coloured pencil that you're using for the colour of the sky and you can draw your clouds in that coloured pencil and just do it very, very lightly. I know that might be difficult for you to see, but it'll come to fruition just in a minute. Okay, now what that lets you do is it lets you avoid this graphite line or ink line, whatever it is you would be drawing in normally. And that helps to add to the, the effect of the cloud because it looks more like a cloud, let's face it. So if you're actually drawing your clouds in, do it in the coloured pencil that you're going to use. And then what you can do is you can start filling in round about. So you're actually putting your sky in and it's your, it's your sky that is shaping the cloud. Now, just by drawing it out, that just gives you the opportunity to have planned out the shape of the clouds and your positioning of them before you start actually colouring in with your pencil. So ideally, when you're drawing your clouds, as I said, just try and keep a, a light hand when you're sketching them in. And what that does is it means you, you don't have any sort of harsh defined lines. Now, if you look at clouds up in the sky, there, there are never any harsh or obvious lines where clouds are. So you can see here, I'm just starting to, I'm, I'm trying to sort of combine speed and accuracy here. Um, so naturally the colouring isn't going to be my best effort, but I'm just wanting to show you this without absolutely boring the pants off you for hours and hours. Uh, it's come to my attention that particularly with the younger generation, no offence to my younger viewers, but the attention span seems to be getting shorter and shorter when it comes to things like this and I've noticed it myself and I think it's because now we live in a, a digital age of instant gratification we don't want to wait for anything the other place that I have noticed it as well is in writing um, some of you might know that I, I do a bit of writing on the side and the pace of a story has to be quick now no one's interested in the sort of epic fantasy novels or Charles Dickens style stories where nothing happens until like chapter 72. No one has the patience for it anymore. And it's just because we're used to having things so, you know, so quickly, instantly, because everything has moved on with technology and digitization and all that kind of stuff. So, um, okay, rambling aside. So yeah, try, try and keep things short and sweet and to the point. I don't want to labour things. Okay there, so you can see now that I have started to lay down a bit of colour and it is darker in along that edge. But by the time I sort of sat and smoothed that out, you know, that, that would be quite even. And that has given you a lovely cloud shape without any sort of divine, it divined, without any sort of defined line art line, if you like. And that just helps to add to the effect of your actual cloud, which is something that is very, very nice for, for you to do. So there we go. We've got something that resembles a cloud. We have the colour that is around about it as well. I'm just going to sort of bring this out a little bit. I'm trying to resist the urge to go back and like put in proper layers and make this all pretty and smooth. We don't have time for this gem. I don't have all day to sit in the colour cave, unfortunately, much as I'd like to. All right then, so we've got something that looks remotely like clouds. We've decided that our background colour is blue. So naturally, any light that diffuses or reflects with this cloud is going to be blue as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a lighter shade of blue uh, and ha ha ha, cloud blue, there's an idea. Oh dear. So what I want to do now, <coughs> excuse me, is just start adding a little bit of colour into the cloud. Now you might not be able to see this because it is quite a pale pencil, but I'll put in enough layers so that you can see it. It doesn't matter what it looks like to the naked eye. So I'm just starting with a light layer and all I'm doing, oh good, that's showing up. All I'm doing is following the contours of my cloud on the bottom side. Now, you don't have to always do it on the bottom side. You can do it on the left or the right or the top, but try and keep some consistency across your clouds. So 
I'm following the contours of what I've drawn and I'm doing it on this bottom side. So I'm just following those original, <laughs> I'm just following those original C shapes that I made with my darker blue pencil. And I'm just adding in the same thing slightly above where I've drawn. Now what this does is it will give your clouds a little bit of definition from each other if you've got an overlap. So that one, and it, it, it makes it look a bit more 3D as well, a little bit more puffy. Now you can add in some of these lines further up as well. I wouldn't lean as heavily if you're doing it further up and use them sparingly. i move on to this one down here now. Just doing the same thing again, maybe a little bit round there. Okay, so you can see there that actually look. I don't know how it looks to you guys, but it looks kind of grey to me rather than blue. But that's okay. So the last thing that I would do as well is take a, a paler grey pencil. See what I've got in my pencil case. Okay, I've got 30% cool grey. I'm going to try with that. I might have to go to 50. And all I'm going to do now is just to add another little bit of definition on the bottom edge of where I've coloured in that pale blue. I'm just going to put in a very light line. And I'm not going to go all the way across. So this is basically an accent on your blue accent that you've just put in. And again, it's just to give it a little bit more depth. Now, if you've got, if this pale blue section is thick enough, you can actually blend out that grey into the blue. So again, you've got no harsh line there. And it just gives, as long as you've got that sort of outer edge that's quite defined, and it just gives a bit more substance to your clouds so that they're not, you know, this, this sort of white fluffy thing. You can see the difference already between this one and this one. It does, I mean, a few pencil strokes can make all the difference. Now that to me is a cloud that is maybe on a, a sort of average day where it's, you know, it's maybe not going to rain. The, the, the sky is quite, you know, nice. If you're looking at more what I would call a Scottish cloud, which tends to be grey all the time, I would take this grey pencil and I would go almost to the edge of the cloud. And this just makes the clouds look a bit heavier. And you can spend the time adding in that grey. Just use a very, very light touch though. And you can build it up round about the blue that you've done. And it just makes that cloud look a bit darker and a bit heavier. Because let's face it, much as we like to, and I've noticed that a lot of people do do it in their pictures, unless the point of the picture is to do with the weather, we tend to go for slightly cheerier weather, don't we? We like to we like to have sunshine and you know all that kind of thing. But sometimes you need something a bit darker. So the more grey that you add in round these accents, the heavier your cloud is going to look. And again, if you just use a light touch, just eyeball it, you know, do a couple of sections and then step back and say, oh, could that be grey or could it be, you know, could it be darker? And I could keep going here. And again, I'm just kind of sticking to the contours that I've already drawn in. And just very, very lightly adding in a little bit more, a little bit more of the grey and taking out more of the white as I go. Okay, so you can see there the difference between these two now. You can go to town with this. If you wanted to make a really dark stormy cloud or, you know, that sort of threat of rain kind of idea, you could fill in the entire cloud with this grey pencil. And once again, if you just put a light layer down, work in circular motions and it gives you the ability to stop and see what's happening and think, um, you know, that, that it still doesn't, it ha doesn't ha hasn't had the desired impact, I need to go darker. And what you can then do is take a darker grey again. So I'm going to go to the 70% uh, cool grey. And where you had your accents originally, step them down a shade. And that'll help you to get that heaviness in the cloud that you're looking for. Make it look as if it's going to burst open and rain on you at any point. I'm just following exactly the same lines as before. Trying my best to blend into what's already there. Turn this so you can see what I'm doing.
because you, you do want a little bit of definition, particularly within the cloud, but not too much that it, it does no longer resembles a cloud. You know, you, st you still want that white space and that sort of delicate softness, which is why using a light hand and these little circular motions is the best way to go. All right, that looks like a much rainier cloud now. And all I would do is just another layer of this paler grey, which is, I think I said the 30%, per yeah, 30 cool grey. And again, circular motions fill in some of those whiter areas, you know, make, make the cloud look a bit darker. There we go. So that's a really quick and handy way to do to do these sort of, you know, the, the, these kind of puffy type clouds, um, if you're actually drawing them in. Now, just thinking about other colours, if I move on to these sort of more pud puddly-like clouds, I would tend to use these in a calm sky, perhaps for a sunrise or a sunset. And naturally, when that is the case, I'm just going to grab some sun type colours here. I'm just going to pick them really quickly. Uh, not carmine, poppy red, that's kind of an orangey red. With sunrises and sunsets, you're going to take a slightly different approach. Now, it's entirely up to you. I would draw them in. And again, the, the, the colour where you're actually putting the cloud. So if the top of your sky is red, then draw them in red. But when it comes to actually putting colour into the clouds, you're going to get that slight reflection of the, the light that's coming from your sunrise or your sunset. So these types of things, I would tend to mix the colours that are directly, you know, directly below these clouds. So very, very light hand. Again, the, the, the general idea between doing these clouds is keep everything very delicate and light. There are no harsh lines when it comes to clouds. So there you are. The sun's going to be down here somewhere. I'll draw that in. And the light from that is emanating. Oh, that's a big word for a Saturday, emanating. Um, so that's going to pop up and hit the bottom of your clouds. So and again, there's there's no real there's no real formula to this. It's just a case of doing what you feel is right. You know, a bit of flight of fancy, as it were. But generally, the lighter colours are going to be closer to your your original light source, so your sun or your you know your sun setting or rising, um, and then just sort of work them in. And you don't have to you don't have to cover the entire cloud if you don't want to. Um, you know, again, it's up to you. I could quite easily stop there just with the orange and it looks absolutely fine because remember my sky is going to be, you know, my sky is going to be red round about this one. So if I do that, just try it. You know, so even with that little bit of white there, that stands out really nicely and the cloud itself pops out because the background is this sort of much, much deeper, richer colour. So even if I have a really pale tint of this pencil, this one is poppy red that I'm using. I have put poppy red in this cloud, but if I go and put my sky in round about this, although it's the same colour, because I've only just tickled the paper with it, those clouds are still going to stand out. So that's another way to give yourself a nice effect when you are using clouds. Down to these ones at the bottom, we have the the sort of swirly wavy ones. Um, this is really just down to, to a stylistic choice. If it were me, if I was wanting some more traditional cloud colours like we've got up here, I would use exactly the same colours and I'd maybe pick out a few lines of each. So let's see. I use the same colours. So there's a blue. And then I'd maybe, you know, maybe do one or two like that. But I would stick to the same set of colours 
for all of the clouds. You know, keep them all uniform, keep them all the same. Just to make sure that I've got that sort of cohesiveness of what it is you're trying to achieve and that you know that they, they still give the impression of clouds basically and then maybe my grey one could be in the middle bit here so if you build that up and you were to colour them all in the same way then that you know that's going to look like a cloud there's no way that's not going to look like a cloud what I will say is that if you are going to use this this sort of technique for colouring in your clouds. I wouldn't use the same colours that you use for the sky because they'll just disappear into the background. Because they are quite intricate as well, I would keep the sky relatively neutral. So maybe just stick to one or two colours if you're going to put a blend in or whatever. I have seen some pictures that have been coloured with pencils and they have had something like this for clouds. And they've also gone for, you know, a really sort of intricate, like almost like a galaxy type feel to them. And they, it, not only does it detract from the main point of your picture, but it just becomes too busy and everything, the, the clouds will just get lost in everything that's going on. So if I was using a technique like this, and I was colouring them in these sort of greys and blues, I would maybe go for something like a, a very, very pale pink sky roundabout. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Pink rose. And what that'll do is it'll let your clouds stand out a little bit. And you'll still have, you know, you'll still have colour in your background. I know a lot of people don't like a, a plain white background. One of my university lecturers used to say to us, nature abhors a vacuum. Now what he was referring to there was that in a, in a living organism, if there is a hole of any description, whether it's an injury or something like that, that the human body will always try and fill the gap as it were, whether it's by multiplying cells or healing a wound. That's that's just the nature of humans. And the same thing applies to colouring. The human nature is, if we see a blank space, we want to fill it. And that is very, very true of artists. If we have something, you know, even if you've been sitting on the phone and you have a bit, you know, a pad of paper, you should, you know, lots of people start doodling and it's trying to fill up that space. Now, it's no different when you're when you're drawing and colouring. That's what you're doing. You're filling a blank page. So you have to try and temper that instinct. And yes, we, do, we don't like big, wide, blank spaces. But if you have too much going on, you're just going to detract from the, the main focal point of your picture. Obviously, if the clouds in the sky are the focal point of the picture, that is a different thing entirely. But it's just something to be aware of when you're picking your colours and also when you're adding things in. The main thing with clouds, generally speaking, is to leave a little bit of white because clouds do have white in them. They're, they're, they're not completely white, but they do have white in them. And I think that's the thing that really tricks the brain into realising that it is a cloud. So you can see, I mean, with these examples, I have left white spaces. That's what it's all about. Coming down to these last ones here, uh, similar to the ones that, was in, uh, that were in Kirby Rosanna's book, all I did with those, again, I'm going to choose a different colour. Process red. This is one of my favourite colours. I'm not really a pinky person, but I'm, I'm quite quite attached to this pencil for some reason. And all I did with these, again, is just the same principle. Make sure there's white left, but just add in a bit of colour. So all I did was a, a simple one pencil gradient with these and started off really heavy at the bottom. And then gradually, as I'm working my way up, just lighten the pressure that I'm using. And again, just little circular motions into almost nothing. And what that does is it gives, it gives a bit of depth and interest to your clouds, but it's not taken away from the fact that, you, you know, it's a white cloud. So you can do that sort of thing, or you can take one edge, for example, like the inner edge here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So... A heavy line following the, the, the line art, if you like, of the picture. 
and then just doing the same thing again and as I'm coming out just lightening that pressure up like this and you can do that all the way around you know all the way around the outside of that and that will give you a slightly different effect I'll go to here just so that we can see what we're doing see how it looks Same principles, same rules apply, as I've said with everything else. If you work with a light hand, you can go back in and add more. You know, you can go straight back in there and make it bolder or brighter if that's what you want to do. If you go in all guns blazing on the off and then you step back and you think, well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> so be aware of that when you're doing that. That's the main ways that I would colour in clouds. The last thing I wanted to show you is going back to this image here. And again, I'm going to give you an example that I've already done, if I can pull it out. This is the Disney Dreams Collection by Thomas Kincaid. And in this book, the pictures are basically just line art, which is based on Thomas Kincaid's original oil paintings, um, which are absolutely spectacular. I love them. And what I have found in these books is, here's an example of them. Here, are the, here is the line art for the clouds, which has obviously been done in black ink, which you have to have to define where the clouds are, and you can see that they're clouds. When you look at Thomas's original artwork, naturally there is no black line surrounding those clouds, and that's because it's been done in paint rather than, uh, you know, uh, pens or pencils. But we have to have some guidelines for colouring in. So when you start to colour these, you will still be able to see the black lines. And that can be quite off-putting for some people, especially when you're go you've got this right next to you. You're, you know, you're wanting to try and do your best, and maybe not to replicate what's on this page, but to give the same sort of feel and sense. So that was my sort of main bugbear when I started colouring in this particular book. And what I did was I blotted out the line art just with a white gel pen. And rather than colouring the, the clouds in white, and you can see none, you can see that none of my clouds are white here. There, there isn't a hint of white at all. But if you look at that picture, you know they're clouds. And that is simply just because it still has that sort of white outline to it. When you compare it to this side, that was the sort of the best I could do with what I had. So I'm just going to show you how to do that as well and get a really nice effect. And it doesn't, if you do, if you look close up, you can see it's actually quite untidy. And that is just because I had layers and layers of gel pen. But when you see the picture from a distance, it looks okay, you know, it looks quite good. And you've got rid of these really heavy black lines. Another place where um, it's quite obvious is around this rock here. And when you look on this side again, you can't see any dark lines at all. So it's something that you can do. However, what I have found is when using a white gel pen, you can colour over it with pencil, but it is not going to match the shade and the saturation that's on the paper. It just doesn't happen. You can sort of blend it a little bit, but it is not the easiest thing to do. So that's why I found this way the best way to do it. And I'm quite pleased with the, the overall effect, although it doesn't look particularly tidy when you look at it close up. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over these lines with black ink just to, to uh, simulate what was happening in that colouring book and show you exactly how to deal with it. Alright, while I'm waiting for this ink to dry so that I can rub out my pencil lines, I'm going to show you one last technique that seems to be very popular. It's not one that I use very often, but I've seen it done quite a few times and it's one that people always ask about, even in the, you know, like the, the colouring forums and the, the groups on Facebook and things. So it's something that I just wanted to show you um, how to do if, it, again, it's something that you're you're interested in doing. So just going on some of the colours that I've used before, I'm going to do a gradient. So I'm going to use Mulberry and Process Red and I'm also going to use Hot Pink. So I have the usual situation, I have a light, a mid and a dark tone. 
Now, this does look quite cute, and again, it's not something that is particularly realistic, but it can have a really nice effect, especially as it is quite delicate. So as I did up here with these clouds, I'm going to draw my outline in the coloured pencil. And all I'm doing here is making these sort of slightly cloudy shapes. And from that, I am just going to start thickening that line up following the shape that I've just made with my darkest colour, which is the mulberry. Just really soften those lines that I've just drawn in. And then I'm going to start in my little circular motions, pulling that up a little bit. And blending them in. And then I'm going to take my mid-tone colour and I'm just going to start adding that in. Now it's up to you how much colour you want to add into this. And I'm now going to my palest colour. You know, you, you can keep the, the distance from here to the top of where your colour ends. You can make that as, as big or as small as you like, depending on how much room you have in your picture. But the idea is that you want to get to your lightest shade and have that fade out almost to nothing like that. Now what I'll do is I'll go back in now and I will wrong pencil gem. There we go, back to my, my mulberry. And I'll just start working on my, my gradient a little bit now. Smoothing this out a little bit. And then back, then back with my pink. Yes, I had a pencil in my mouth again. <laughs> it's a habit I can't just, just can't shake it at all. Okay, so what is what I've done there is I've created the outline of the cloud below. And I would do the same thing underneath again. So I would start maybe here. And just do exactly what I did before. Get that shape. And do the same thing again and have my gradient come up. Not quite to meet this line. I would always leave a line of white. I'll show you what I mean a bit better. Explain by doing, not by saying. This does take a little bit more time, but it is a quite quite a nice effect when you see it. Especially if you do this over a you know like a, a whole section of paper, it gives you a really really nice effect. So back to my my mid color, which is my hot pink. Nope, telling you lies. Process red. Do you know I knew that was wrong? You know before it even came out my mouth, but it still came out my mouth. <laughs> So just take the time here, the way you would with any other gradient, to build up the colour very, very gently. And go back in and go over it and over it and over it until you're at a stage where you're happy with it. So I'm kind of following the shape of the cloud above this, but not not to the absolute letter, you know, it's not, not scientifically perfect. Um, but again, with clouds, you know, you, you want that sort of softness and that, that slightly random aspect of it because that's what makes them feel more organic and feel more like clouds. The trick with this is to keep your, when you're doing your darkest colour, is to keep that bottom edge as defined as you possibly can so that it gives the shape of the cloud underneath. That's really the key to making this, this work. I'll just that in as well and again you can go to town with this you can make it really vibrant if that's what you want but just make sure when you get to your lightest shade that you are you are you know you're fading it out to to almost nothing you can still have really dark and vibrant shades at the bottom but when you get up near to the edge of your cloud you want that to be you know a little bit more a little bit more sort of soft
Now you can also invert this as well. So if you wanted to do it the opposite way around, you would have the darkest color at the top. So you're basically working backwards. If I show you down here, so I'm still doing the shape of the cloud with my darkest pencil, like so. And instead of working up the way, I'm gonna work down the way and do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna have that nice defined line there with my darkest colour, which as I said here is the mulberry. And then I'm just in my little scumbling motions. I do believe that is the correct terminology for it. Move into my middle colour, which is the process red. Just start blending that in a little bit. Lightening that up again and then into my palest colour. And you can start your next one, leave a white space, leave a gap and then start your next one here. And just do the same thing again. Now naturally I would like to think that you would take more time and care <laughs> over these than I am doing just now. But I am now aware of the length of this video and I don't want it going on forever for the aforementioned reasons, attention spans and all the rest of it. So that's me just adding in the mid-tone. And then my lighter colour. Now if you like as well, once you've built up a few rows of these, you know, you've got your little clouds on the go and you're happy with them, you can go with your lightest colour and you can actually very gently follow the contours of the next row down. If you want that more sort of defined area of white, like this, and it'll give you a really nice effect. So there you go, that's another few ways that you can add some clouds into your picture. I'm gonna go back up now to the ink and just erase my pencil lines and we'll talk about the gel pen and clouds that aren't actually white. Okay, so I've tidied up my uh, my pencil lines a little bit here now. I'm just going to use the same colours that I used down for these ones and just show you what I was doing in, that, in the Thomas Kincaid book. Now, really, I, I kind of just randomly coloured the clouds in, in the, you know, the corresponding shades that were, uh, that were in the reference, uh, well, I was going to say drawing in the reference painting, as it were. So I kind of, like, randomised it. I did use... Um, you know, the, the sort of, the, well, similar colours, but they weren't actually all from the same colour family either. So that's really up to you whether you want to do that or whether you want to stick to something like this where you've got, a, you know, a mid uh, light and a dark tone. It is entirely up to your good selves. And all I did there was I, I didn't even really shade anything, to be perfectly honest. I did do it quite sort of randomly and just, you know, use the colours and sort of spread them about a little bit and just to kind of, just to give the picture interest really, that's what, that's what I was aiming for. What I did do though was where there was an overlap like this, I used my darker colour underneath, like my darkest colour and I did, you know, lean into that a bit more and it was really just to provide some definition because when I go over the black line art with a white gel pen, I didn't really want, you know, I wanted the distinction between the clouds to still really stand out. So I, I did make a point of making these sections a bit darker. And again, I'm not taking much care over this, guys. Um, it's just really to give you an idea. So you can take a bit more time and care over it and decide where you want to, to put what colour down. You know, that's entirely up to you. So I'll just finish adding some colour in here. Normally I would spend the time, you know, putting in the layers and 
sorting it all out and making it all very pretty and lovely, but I'm just, I'm just not going to do that today. I'm such a rebel. <laughs> I was quite rebellious as a teenager, so maybe it's left over from that latent rebellion. Yeah, I was quite wild as a teenager. Which is quite funny because everyone says I'm I'm the most sensible family member now, which I find absolutely hilarious because I don't think of myself as sensible at all. <laughs> okay, so you're getting the idea here. I'll probably um, end up speeding this up when I actually come to edit the video because, you know, you don't need to sit and watch me do this. <laughs> okay, so that's us done. Now here we have our beautifully coloured in cloud um, and those big black ugly lines are just spoiling it for us. So what I have here is a Uniball Signal broad tipped gel pen. Uh, I also favour the Jelly Roll white gel pens. Uh, the, the, these are two of my favourites and I do just jump between them. I don't uh, discriminate. I, I like them both equally and they do a good job of covering up dark lines as well so not particularly fussed on that. And I'll, all I'm simply doing is First of all, make sure you get your ink rolling and it's definitely coming out. And just in sort of slight feathery motions, I'm just working my way around the outline of this cloud. And you are most likely going to have to use more than one coat. So I will stress, please give your gel pen time to dry properly before you go in and put another coat of it on. Or else all it does is scratch through what's already there and you just end up with a big old mess. So just light feathery strokes all the way around and you can see that the, the black ink is still peeking out from behind the, the white gel pen. But that is to be expected. Unless the lines are really thin, the, you know, the black line art is really thin, you are likely going to need at least two layers. And don't even be too concerned about absolutely annihilating the black. It's all right if a little bit of it shows through. Um, it's not going to, it's going to look more grey than black. Um, so, don't, you know, you don't have to take too much care over it. But you can see already, even if I just finish this one cloud, the difference it makes to the picture is, you know, it's quite substantial. There we go. So I'm just going to let that dry for a little minute. But you can see already the difference is huge. And it just adds that sort of outer softness, which really has been the running theme through all of our clouds. It's this sort of lack of harsh edges surrounding our clouds that make it look more cloud-like, with the exception, obviously, of these slightly more stylized designs here. But that, that really is, um, you know, that's a, a different kettle of fish, so to speak. So I'm just going to leave this to dry for a wee minute and we'll come back and we'll stick another coat on and see how we go. Just for comparison, I have lifted out my... Excuse me, I have a really itchy nose today. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've also lifted out my white jelly roll gel pen. Uh, having a look at this, I don't know whether it's just the paper that I'm using, but the uh, Uniball one... The, the gel seems to look quite yellow on the paper. I'm sure you can see that. So I just wanted to do this other part of this cloud with the jelly roll to see if there's any difference. So just do a little experiment while we're here. So same thing again. Just make sure when you're using gel pens that you have got a flow of ink coming out before you start. And it'll stop you getting that sort of scratchy -ness. Scratchiness. The nib on this is slightly smaller, so I'm going to have to, you know, take a bit more time to try and cover up what's there. So you can see straight away that, <coughs> excuse me, the coverage from the Uniball one is slightly better over the, over the black ink. 
but as I say, realistically, when you're doing this, you're wanting to cover up the whole thing, so you would you would want to be using two coats of your gel pen anyway, at any rate. Just join that one up there. There isn't too much of a colour difference there. You could almost say that that came from the same pen, but the, the jelly roll doesn't seem to have the same coverage as the uniball. So I'm going back with my uniball now, and I'm going to give this another another coat. I think it is just the paper actually, because this it does seem very very yellow. But see, it might just be because the paper is extremely white. I can hear my little Jack Russell scrattling about in the kitchen. She uh, she quite often goes into Jock's bed, which is the collie, and she rolls about in his bed like on her back and everything. <laughs> I don't know whether she's trying to like rub her scent on it or what she's trying to do, but it's almost like she's mocking him. It's quite funny. The Jock is very shy. He's uh, he's a very laid back character and likes to sort of you know watch from a safe distance with things. Whereas Jack Russell Tilly. Um, is a typical Jack Russell and she's always the sort of forward one, you know, I'll, I'll do this, I'll go first, I'm in charge. So it's quite funny to watch her do things like that. I definitely think it's a dominance thing. Anyway. Okay, there you go then. So that's covered that up a bit better now and you can see that it does make a difference to your picture. Aside from my very rushed colouring, which, uh, you know, isn't really up to much in this, that's the kind of effect that you can get. And when you see it with another colour behind where your clouds are, as I've done, just move this out of the way again, as I've done in here, it has a really, really nice effect. And it just sort of gets rid of that, you know, the, 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 the lines of the clouds, which seem to just... They, they seem to just ruin it for me, really. I don't know why I'm so bothered about it, but I really am. There we go. So that is everything I have to show you today. I hope that has been of some use to you in helping decide what to do with your clouds. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely grand. And if you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to do so and join us again soon in the Colour Cave. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.